Hi, I'm Daniela of AB Crafty, and today I'm gonna show you how to make a wet felted and nina felted coin purse. You'll need to use a resist for this project. This is a piece of non-porous material you put between the fiber layers to prevent the wool from felting together. It also serves as your pattern. I've provided the pattern for the resist for free on my crafting blog at abcrafty.com slash felted coin purse, along with the step-by-step -step instructions. The link is also in the description along with the full list of materials. So once you've cut your resist using the pattern, place it on a large piece of bubble wrap. Then pull off a small amount of fiber and lay it in one direction on top of the resist. Keep this layer thin. You can always add more, but by keeping it light and even, it'll allow the fibers to more easily interlock and felt together. Feel free to play around with different colors of wool. Comment below which colors you would want to use. Let a little bit of the fiber lay over the edge so that it can wrap around. After you have your first layer of wool, add another layer perpendicular to the first. If needed, cut the fiber to shorten it if you need just a little bit to fill in some spots. If you do this, I recommend mixing them up a bit and separating them so they're not in a sharp straight line. You want them to blend nicely together with the other fiber. Now after you have two perpendicular layers, take some mesh fabric and place it over the wool. Then mix some olive oil soap into hot water. Wet the wool with the soapy water just enough to soak the fiber. Then use your hands to gently press the soapy water into the wool and push the air out. Now after the wool fiber is all wet, grab one side and tuck in the fiber and then carefully flip it over and remove the netting. Now go around the edge and pull the wisps towards the middle. If you don't, it'll felt against itself and you'll have a little bit of a crease along the edge. Now on this side, start layering the wool again. Begin your first layer in the same direction as you did on the other side. And then just as before, let some of the fibers hang off the edge. Then add your second layer, again perpendicular to the first. Then same as before, cover it again with the mesh fabric and wet it. Repeat the process of pressing out the air and then flipping it over. Now that you have both sides done, you're gonna repeat the process again on both sides. So now in total, you should have four perpendicular layers of fiber on each side. Once you have your fiber laid out, you can now add any embellishments that you want. For mine, I use sari silk scraps. To blend the fabric in so that it's not just a piece of fabric with harsh edges, add fiber along the edge of the silk. This will also help it felt to the fiber. When you felt fabric into wool, it's called nuna felting. I next added yarn and swirled it all over the piece. With any embellishments that you add, make sure some hang off the edge. This way it's seamless all the way around and doesn't look like the coin purse has two completely separate sides. Once everything is how you like it, cover and wet it. You likely won't need as much water this time. Then flip it over and add more embellishments to the other side. Once you're happy with how everything looks on both sides, it's time to start felting. I have a whole separate video on wet felting basics, so definitely check it out as I go into much more detail there. The link's also in the description. But to start, you wanna use your palms and very gently rub along the top to create a skin. This will also keep everything in place. Then you can gradually add more pressure. It's also good to lift the mesh occasionally to check to see if any of the embellishments are sticking. If they are, that means you're using a bit too much pressure. So lighten up on the pressure and then continue to check. As it gradually felts, you'll be able to get more aggressive. Make sure to work on both sides until the embellishments are staying completely in place. So once they're staying in place, it's time to start rolling. Wrap everything around a pool noodle and then wrap it in a towel. You're gonna roll it on all sides and from all sides. I personally like to roll a hundred times from each direction. Again, I go over all of this in more detail in my other video and have a full blog post on everything you need to know about wet felting, but you wanna keep rolling and checking on it throughout. Then once you've rolled it from all sides, check to see if it passes the pinch test. How you do this is you lightly pinch the fibers upwards. If they lift together as one, then it's ready. If the fibers still feel like separate little fibers, then you still need to do more rolling. Once it passes the pinch test, you can get more aggressive with your project. When you start to feel it shrink and the resist becoming too small, it's time to remove the resist. To do so, cut along the top of the small curve and pull out the resist. Now this is where it starts to get fun. Personally, I'm not a big fan of rolling, but once I can start working with my hands, I really like it. So what you wanna do is get your hands nice and soapy and rub the inside of the pouch. What you're doing is again creating another layer of skin on the inside. 
I also sometimes find it easier to actually fold the whole project inside out and then work from the outside. At this point is when I like to use a wooden dowel to roll because you can be more aggressive. Open up the pouch and flatten it on its side. This will also help so that there isn't a crease forming along the edge. Once it felts down to close to the size that you want, you can start shaping the purse so it's more round. Once it's the size and shape that you want and it fits the purse clasp, rinse it underwater until it doesn't feel soapy and the water runs clear. After it's rinsed, let it soak in warm water that's been mixed with a splash of vinegar. Then gently squeeze out the water without rinsing out the vinegar and let it dry. To sew on the purse clasp, thread a needle with some embroidery thread. I personally like to use a color that matches the colors of the wool and embellishments. Push the felt all the way into the clasp. Start from the inside and push the needle through the second hole. Then go back down through the first hole. Then come up through the third and back down through the second. Continue in this pattern, coming up through the next hole and back through the one before. When you get to the end, tie it into a knot and cut off the excess. Repeat the same process on the other side of the clasp. I've made so many of these coin purses, it's kind of become my go-to felting project. Let me know if you make one, I would absolutely love to see it. The best way would be to tag me on Instagram, ab.crafty. And don't forget, all these steps and pattern for the resist are on the blog so you can save them for later. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, and comment below which felting projects or any other projects you want to see. And to see what I'm crafting day to day, be sure to follow me across my socials.